Church of the Living God, Temple 202, 1954 South M Street, Tacoma, Washington, 9405, where Bishop Lawrence White is our pastor. Lady Audrey White is our first lady. We pray that something is shared will be a blessing unto you. Bring the word today, Bishop Lawrence White. Join me, uh, amen, for a scripture reading for today. Uh, we're going to ask you, if you would, uh, consider, uh, amen, the writings of the, the prophet Isaiah, amen. Join with me in the book of Isaiah in the 55th chapter. I'm going to read from verse number 8, Isaiah 55, amen. verse number 8. We're going to ask you to stand. Uh, amen. With us as we read from the word of God today. And the prophet writes these familiar words. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Uh -huh. Neither are your ways my ways, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. May God have a blessing to the reading and hearing of this anointed word. And may I today have the courage to preach it that the people of God say amen. amen. You may be seated. If you would, for a few moments today, we, uh, amen, we'll be sensitive to our time. Uh, for a few moments today, if you all will pray with me and pray for me, I want to uh, preach from the theme, the thought, the topic, when God just doesn't make sense. Uh -huh. Amen. I want to encourage somebody, somebody here maybe, uh, amen, you were trying to figure God out, and God said, Try, stop trying to figure me out. Mm -hmm. I want to preach from the subject today when God just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. When we do not think like God, My Lord. we are not in his image. Amen. We cannot say, as Jesus did, he who has seen me has seen the Father. That's in St. John's 14, chapter, verse number 9. God in his wisdom has willed that we grow in his image through exercising faith in what he says. Mm -hmm. Buttressed by what he reveals of himself in his creation. My brothers and sisters, the fundamental difference between the person of faith and the unbeliever is revealed by the way they judge things. My Lord. You see, the unbeliever, amen, the unbeliever of the world judges things by worldly standards, mm -hmm. by his or her sense and by time. Sometimes we'll, we'll judge, uh, amen, our circumstances by how quickly they work out. Amen. Turn to somebody and ask them, what you're waiting for? What you're waiting for? The person learning to think like God brings God into everything. Yes. Amen. Viewing things from his perspective and by his values. Mm -hmm. Turn to somebody and say, it's all about God. They ascertain how the activity, the event, or thing looks in terms of eternity. Mm -hmm. They seriously meditate on God's sovereignty over all things. At times, doing this puts the screws to their trust. Because the Bible says that God's judgments, watch this, are unsearchable. In his ways, past finding out. That's Romans 11 and 33. Uh-huh. You see, faith holds a personal, uh, a person steady. My Lord. Faith will hold you steady when the winds are blowing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Faith will hold you steady when your footing is unsure. Faith will hold you steady when the world around you is changing. Right. Amen. Because we often do not think like him, mm -hmm. and because we do not have his perfect perspective, we often do not exactly know what God is doing. Mm -hmm. 
Only in hindsight do we understand what is occurring in our personal life to the church or even in the world in the outworking of prophecy. And how many of us know that we're living in the last days right now and God's word is unfolding right before us? Yeah. So we must trust him and in the meantime weigh what is happening and its possible outcomes. Each of us has or will ask the question, why? Has mm -hmm. anybody ever asked God why? Maybe in the last week somebody's asked God why? Mm. Why why is this happening? Why am I still dealing with this? Why is this why are you still allowing this? Why? Turn to somebody and say, why? Why? Why is this thing happening in my life? Mm -hmm. It does not necessarily mean that we have no faith in God. Mm -hmm. It just shows our human frailty and perhaps our desire to know and to understand what God is doing. Mm -hmm. We live in what I would call, and I'm going to date myself here, Minister Melly, because Young folks don't know nothing about this, but we live, uh, Lady Audrey, in what I would refer to as the Star Trek generation. My, my, my. We want, as Dr. Spock would say, we, we want things to be logical. Mm. We want to put God in a logical forum, and, and that is uh, just not how God works. My Lord. There is nothing logical, watch this, there is nothing logical about a man, uh, someone being born, someone maybe like Adolf Hitler. Mm. <laughs> Why was he even born? My Lord. Much less come into power and kill over six million of God's people. Turn mm. somebody say, that don't make sense. That don't make sense. There's nothing logical when a servant of God who is winning souls and serving him on a foreign field suddenly dies of cancer or maybe in a car wreck. Mm. So I said, that don't make sense. That don't make sense. There's no logic when, when someone who is being faithful to, to God, giving of their self, giving of their substance, being faithful in their service to God, and yet they find themselves on their sick bed. Mm -hmm. And how do you explain to a mother who waited for that first child only to find that it was a stillborn? My Lord. Wow. Somebody said, that don't make sense. That don't make sense. There's no logic when someone we love who is so young is suffering that we do not understand why. Mm -hmm. Very quickly today, I want to deal with three, uh, three scenarios if you would consider. And I want uh, to appeal uh, to all of uh, God's children, but specifically to the hearts of our sister today being, being uh, Women's Day. I want to appeal to your heart. I want to appeal to your sense of logic because uh, as men, we're just box checkers. And so we just try to say, okay, God, show me the next box so we can, we can, we can check it. But for you, my sisters, for you, beloved of God, it's, it's an emotional attachment to God. It's an emotional impact. It, it impacts you not only spiritually, but emotionally when things don't work the way that you thought they should. Amen. So I could today, I want to just talk about and have you consider three scenarios. Look at the book of 1 Samuel in the first chapter, verse number 11. 1 Samuel in the first chapter, verse number 11. I want to talk about a woman by the name of Hannah. Uh -huh. The scripture reads as follows. It said, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. if thou wilt indeed look on the afflictions of thy handmaid, and remember me. Somebody say, remember me. Remember me. Come on, say, remember me. Remember me. And not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a child. Then, watch this, I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Mm -hmm. 
The name Hannah means gracious. So here we have one who was named gracious, but, but, but Sister Melanie remained gracious in her relationship to God. She was the wife of Elkanah. Mm -hmm. But the challenge came, and the thing that she could not understand, Sister Schuyler, in the onset of a relationship with God is, God, I'm faithful to you, but yet I'm still barren. We'll talk to somebody who, who, who's feeling a little barren today, feeling a little empty today, feeling a little lost. You, you're not where God is, uh, uh, you believe God wants you to be. You're not doing what you believe God has done. You have produced what you believe God deserves. I'm going to talk to someone who is being challenged today and feeling like they're a little barren, a little dry. Uh-huh. The Bible said that we should produce fruit. Christ himself said, I would that you would produce much fruit. And then he said, and that your fruit will remain. Right. Mm -hmm. And in the context of the text, Lady Audrey, we find Hannah not only in her relationship with God was barren in this season, but you have to understand the full context and the impact of being barren in this culture. It was, it was, uh, it was a mark of shame, Sister Rice, if you will, for a woman to have not had experience in childbirth. It was a shame for a woman who was married, had a husband, and had not given that husband a child, a specifically even a man child and so and so Hannah amen found herself in a situation where I'm faithful to God I don't understand why I'm barren and I don't understand why I'm being ridiculed the way that I am my, my, my. I want to talk to somebody who your circumstances are out of your control See, it's one thing to be going through something, Minister Melody, if I made a wrong choice or if I had an error of my ways. So depending, it's one thing to understand that if I'm going through something that I can touch, feel, and see the evidence of how I contributed to what I'm going through. But how do you explain what God is doing when you haven't done nothing but live right? My Lord. Jesus. Help us, Lord. Hmm. So now she was suffering ridicule. And then in the circumstance to make it worse, somebody talk to me, to make it worse now, uh, amen, uh, 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 there was one who bore a child, amen, one, one who bore a child close to her, and she became, uh, how many of us have dealt with ridicule from right in your own, in your own span of influence? It's one thing to be ridiculed by folks who don't know you, and that's, that's a little easier to deal with because you can just account it as the fact that, that you don't know me, you don't know my business, and so you can take a posture and say, you're just talking out of the side of your neck. But it's another thing to be ridiculed right in your face. Come on. Has anybody dealt with the challenge of somebody being able to do something that you can? Mama. Or oh, God giving them an opportunity that you think you deserve. I, I should have struck a chord there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've been challenged with, with the frustrations. I'm faithful to God. I'm in relationship with God. But it, it looks like God, somebody else is getting the opportunity before me. And I don't, I don't understand what's going on. Turn to somebody and say, what's going on here? What's going on here? Yeah, what, what's going on here? I don't understand. I'm being faithful and somebody else is getting the opportunity. I'm being faithful and somebody else is getting noticed. I'm being, I'm being faithful and somebody else is being fruitful. What about me? How many of us have asked God the question, what about me? So the Bible said that Hannah, and I, I, wish, I wish more of us found this as a solution. My God. The Bible said that in a time of being barren, that she didn't become an enemy to God. Mm. Somebody talk to me. See, God wants to know how am I going to act, not in my fruitful season, but he wants to know how am I going to act in my dry season. How am I going to conduct myself when things don't seem like they're going right, when they don't seem to be going my way? How am I going to conduct myself? Am I still going to be the image of God? The question for me today, the question of God to you today, my sisters, is can he see himself in you in your season of barrenness? Amen. Okay. Can he see his reflection in your dry place? Wow. 
And so, and so Hannah, amen, instead of becoming an enemy of God or becoming adversarial with God or overly questioning God, the Bible said that Hannah went to the house. Uh -huh. Yeah, God wants to know when you're in distress, when you draw to him. God wants to know when you when you're in a dry place, when you're in a um, barren place, when when you're in a barren place, when when you run to Him, when you come back to Him, when you put your focus and attention on Him. So so Hannah went to the house of God, and the Bible said that the priest came into the sanctuary, the holy place, and Hannah was in there, and he said that her mouth was moving, but wasn't coming out. Mm -hmm. In matter of fact, she was conducting herself, Lady Audrey, in such a way that the Bible declares that the man of God thought she was drunk in the house. Hello, somebody. When you when you when you're going through, when you're when you're being challenged, when you when you when your walking relationship with God is being challenged, can you conduct yourself in such a holy manner, uh, uh, such such a sanctified? Because see, we don't recognize holiness like we used to. My God, come on, come on. See, holiness today, Sister Penny, is unusual. So it's taking this unusual behavior today. It's not the norm. It's out of the norm. So when you see somebody walking in holiness, you think they have lost their mind. Yeah, that's right. Man. And so the man of God accused her in the spirit. He accused her of being drunk in the house. But how many of us know that, that, that Hannah wasn't drunk? She was just drunk in the spirit. She had plugged in to a power source and something had taken over. And I want to talk to somebody that God is trying to tell you, plug in and let God take over. Let the Spirit of God take over because the Spirit of God will, it will make you the fulfillment of God's word. He said, we are peculiar people. Anybody want to be peculiar in Jesus? Yes. 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 Yeah, Hannah didn't, didn't argue at God, be mad at God. She didn't, she didn't become an adversary of God, but she, she walked in fulfillment of a relationship with God. And so she went to God. She went to the house of God and she began to pray. Yes. Amen. That's the only way. So I'm remembered, reminded today, amen, of two, two portions of scripture that, that come to mind. The psalmist wrote these words, turning your Bibles to, uh, amen, Psalms 34, verses 1 through 3. Psalms 34, verses 1 through 3. And look at what the psalmist wrote. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yeah. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I wonder if anybody in here that can bless God in spite of Amen. 
So how did he reward her? He rewarded her faithfulness with three sons and two daughters. My Lord. I don't know about you, but that sounds like the exceeding abundantly to me. Yeah, amen. That when we, when we're faithful to God, son, in a barren place, faithful to God, when things are not going our way, God will not only bless us, but he will bless us in abundant ways. Right. Secondly, let me, let me move, let me bear witness to another woman in, in the book of 2 Kings. Mm -hmm. In the fourth chapter, I'm going to read verses 17 through 20. 2 Kings in the 4th chapter, verses 17 through 20. And the Bible records these words. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season mm -hmm. that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on the day that he went out to his father to the reapers. Mm -hmm. And he said unto his father, my head, my head. Mm -hmm. And he said to the lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon, oh then he died. Oh what do you do? So, Scott, what do you do when it appears that God is an Indian giver? Mm. <laughs> what do you do, Sister Penny, when, when, you, when you were faithful to God and you, yeah. you served God and then God gave you the fulfillment of the promise unto you only to take it back? Uh -huh. You ain't saying nothing to me. How many of us have been in a situation and you were just celebrating God and you were just you were just exclaiming God and you were just rejoicing in God because God works something out only to see it turn again? Uh -huh. Jesus. Help us, Lord. The Bible said that the Shunammite woman had been faithful to the man of God. Man. That when Elisha came to and fro visiting in the city, ministering in the city, coming through the city, that 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 the Shunammite woman and her husband were faithful to honor him, to, to serve him, to bless him. And how many of us know that you can't bless God and God don't bless you back? I don't know. I wish somebody hear that. How many of my sisters in the house know that when God, when you bless God, that God will bless you back? Amen. And so, so the Shunammite woman, the Shunammite woman, Minister Melanie, was faithful to the man of God and, and so, so committed to being, uh, and how many of us know that hospitality is a ministry? Yeah. That's right. Let, let me say that again. We don't, we, don't, we don't want to talk about speaking in tongue, laying on hand, prophesying, all that, but how many of us know that hospitality is a ministry? And so, and so this woman was operating in the ministry of hospitality that, that her and her husband were working as a cohesive team to take care. And so one day she went to her husband, Sister Rice, and she said, let us prepare a place. Let us make a room, a, a place of dwelling for the man of God, the servant of God, so that upon his next trip and every trip after that, that he will have a place to lay his head, a place to rest, a place, a place of welcome. In, in Anybody made room for God? My Lord. Y'all didn't respond. I'm saying, is there anybody that's made room for God? Amen. That you were intentional and said, I got to build a place. I got to build a room. Turn to somebody and say, by the way, I am the church. By, I am the church. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, at the church, there ought to be a room allocated where you and God can go meet a place where the Spirit of God, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. There ought to be a dwelling place in the church. Amen. Where the servant of God, that the Spirit of God can come in and rest. Turn to somebody and say, by the way, I am the church. I am yeah, the God church. wants to know today, my sisters, is there a place in your heart, a place in the church today where he can come and meet you, a secret place where he can come and rest, lay his head down for a while, find a place of peace. Somebody here, God is, is challenging you to build space for God, make room for the Lord, even in your time in which things are not going well. The Bible said that the woman of God was faithful to God and 
and she made a place. And so when Elisha came, watch this. Elisha came and he was just he was just amazed at the hospitality of this woman. Uh, amazed at the hospitality of her husband. Amazed, first lady, at how gracious they were and how they would be concerned about his welfare. And so Elijah asked her the question, saying, what can I do for you? You've been so grateful to me. How can I bless you? And is there anybody that's had a conversation with God lately? Yes, sir. And God has just wanted to reward your faithfulness. And he said, what can I do for you? And how many of us know God knows what we have need of yeah. what we have? Yeah. But that's just like our father, that he doesn't take any, uh, any he doesn't take anything for granted. So right. first lady, he'll say, Audrey, how can I bless you? How can I do work in your life? How can I bless your family? Maybe bless you, bless your husband. Is there anybody here yes, that sir. talked to you lately and said, I just want to bless you? Yes, yes sir. Yes. So Elijah right. spoke to her and said, how can I bless you? Mm-hmm. What can I do? What can God do to be a blessing to you? You've been so gracious. You've been so kind. You've been so loving. You and your husband. What can I do to bless you? Yes. So the man of God got revelation from God. And, and I love when people are hearing from God on my behalf. Uh -huh. Turn to somebody and ask them, have you heard anything lately? Have you heard anything lately? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm grateful when, when, when somebody gets a positive word of revelation. Yes, sir. They heard something. Yeah. So I just want to let you know how God getting ready to bless you. Yeah. So, so we don't we don't we don't we don't have that conversation enough. We need to stop all the other conversations. You always have that. We stop all, stop talking about all the other stuff and talk about what God want to do in somebody's life. Start telling them that God wants to heal them. They want to deliver them. That God wants to give you their sin. God wants you operating in the overflow. Turn to somebody and say, God wants you operating in the overflow. Yeah, God. Worship and operate in the overflow. So the man of God, amen, got a word from heaven. He got a download. And he said, listen, in due season, watch this. Because, because see, see, the Shunammite woman didn't have any children either. And so watch that. And so, and, and how many of us know that God will bless you right in your barren place? Yes, sir. And so the man of God, watch this. The man of God said, in due season, God is going to give you a child. So the man of God has spoken prophetically unto her. But the question is, watch this, the question is, what do you do when unexpected things hit your life? Mm. Oh, Jesus. What do you do? How do you conduct yourself when unexpected things happen? In our text, it says that the Shunammite woman again, and her husband was very faithful, that the man of God now has spoken and said, in due season, you're going to bear a child. The Bible declares that in due season, Sister writes that she did indeed bear a son, that she had a child. And now the child is of age, and so he goes out to the field, Minister Melanie, to visit his father. Amen. And I told this before, and I'll say it again. Amen. That is just like us as daddies when we're doing something. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell our children to go talk to your mama. Right. So the boy came and said, Daddy, my head is hurt. He said, go talk to your mama. Uh-huh. Yeah. Matter of fact, watch this, this is right. He told somebody to take him to his mother. Uh -huh. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. That's a whole nother, whole nother sermon. He said, said, take him to his mother. And the Bible said that the father went back to what he was doing, working in the field with the other workers. The son was delivered to his mother. The son crawled up on his mother's lap, or sat on her lap, uh, amen, Mr. Coleman, and he died. Mm. Can I talk to a sister in the house? What happens when you're holding the promise and then the promise dies? You are saying that to me? Let me talk to somebody out there. Let me, is there a sister out there someplace that God blessed you in a special way? God, God gave you the fulfillment of the promise unto you only to have you take possession of the promise and then the promise dies right before your eyes. Hello. The Bible said that the son, the child, the promise that, that was now sitting in her lap and now in her loving arms, the Bible said that the boy died right in her arms, right in her face. And the Bible said that she didn't break a stroke. Mm. 
See, God wants to know not how we're going to conduct ourselves when everything is alive and everything is well and everything is wonderful. God wants to know how are you going to conduct yourself when unexpected things happen. There was nothing in her mind that would ever believe, Minister Coleman, that her son was going to die. There's nothing in her mind that believed that the family that had now been put together made hope by having a child that it now would be torn apart. There was nothing in her that would have expected that that would have been the last day that she would see life in her son's body. So my question again is what do you do when unexpected things happen? The Bible said that this woman did not panic. Mm -hmm. She did not become frantic. She did not become angry. She did not lose her mind. The Bible says she took the child to the upper room. Uh -huh. Turn to somebody and ask, where did you lay it at? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Turn to somebody and say, where did you lay it at? The Bible said that she took the child and laid him in the upper room. And then the Bible says she went to the field and she inquired of her husband and said, can you get me a ride? Can you call me an Uber? Can you, can you call me a Lyft? I was somebody talking to me. She said, can you arrange for me to get a ride? Is there anybody here that, that, that in spite of the circumstances in your life, you didn't, you didn't lose your wits in, you didn't, you didn't lose your mind, you didn't become uncharacteristics, but you just did what you knew that the Spirit of God was leading you to do. See, 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 the, the, the Shunammite woman knew that she needed to go back to the beginning. Maybe there was something that I missed. Maybe there's some, something I need to go back to. So she decided to go back to where the first thing started. And so she asked the husband, can you arrange for me a rock? He said, sure, baby, where do you want to go? She said, I want to go see Elijah. I want to go see the man of God. He said, no problem. I got it. And so the Bible said that when she was walking away, he said, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. He said, today ain't Sunday. He said, today is not a holy day. Uh huh. And she turned around and 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 and, with, and didn't didn't whisper. She she didn't stutter. She didn't mince her words. She said, "It'll be well." Turn to my way here and say, "It'll be well." Yeah, we 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 gotta learn how to speak. See see the woman of the woman of God. See when unexpected things happen, God wants to know can you. See can you, can you maintain a holy language? Did somebody miss that? I, I'm going to ask again. God wants to know when unexpected things happen, can you maintain a holy language? She, spent, she spoke a holy language. She spoke, she spoke prophetically and said, it'll be well. See, see, you got to, when, when the enemy is allowed to show up, somebody ought to hear me today. The Bible said when the enemy comes in like a flood, that God will raise up a standard. Yes,
wants to encourage you that you can speak into the atmosphere and God will respond to what you say. The devil is a liar that is too late. The devil is a liar that is dead and done. The devil is a liar that you might accept your circumstances. I wonder if there's somebody here that can speak into the atmosphere and say, it will. That the shooter my woman said it will, it will be well. The Bible said that you got in the presence of Elijah. Is there anybody here, good God Almighty, that knows that Job said, he said, though you slay me, he said, yet shall I trust. Is there anybody here that heard over in Hebrews 11 and 1? He said, faith is. Is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. Is there anybody here? You don't have to wait until you see it to speak it. You don't have to wait until you can touch it to speak it. Is there anybody here that will open up your mouth and speak into the atmosphere and say it will, it will be well? Is there any said that you can come to the throne of grace boldly and tell God all about it. And the Bible said that when she told Elijah what had happened, that Elijah followed her back to her home. Is there anybody here that heard the summon say, he said, surely, somebody should have shouted there, he said, surely, he said, surely, goodness and mercy is following me all the days of my life. I got good news in the kingdom of God today that there's somebody who's got your back, even though they said it was dead. Turn to somebody and say, God's got my back. Somebody here, do your head like this and say, God's got my back. He's following me. Is there anybody here that remembers Mary and Martha and Jesus asked a question? Show me where you laid him. I heard the songwriter say that, and the old mothers on the mother's board, they used to sing a song. They said, I feel better, so, so much better since I laid my burden down. Is there anybody here that can show God where you laid your burden? The Bible said that she put her son in the upper room. Why is it important that she put her son in the upper room? Catch this. The Holy Ghost told me that when you expect something of God, it's waiting at the next level. Somebody here. God told me to tell you that if you're going to get in your blessing, it's at the next level. It's not where you started. Somebody here, you want to praise God? You lost your mind. Say, my blessing is at the next level. My miracle is at the next level. My breakthrough is at the next level. Give God a praise. In this place, the Bible said that when Elijah got to the house, he went to the next level, and the boy was laying there, no life in his body. There were other folks in the room, but is there anybody here that knows that you got to separate in your season of unexpected situations? You got to separate yourself. Yeah. For folks who don't believe that God can work it out. Somebody here, somebody in your life has been talking negative all around you. Shut them up and put them out. Somebody here, you got folks in your ears talking negative. But God sent me today to say, put them out. Come out from among them. The Bible said that we can speak those things as they are and as they will be. The Bible says
Somebody talked to me. Is there, is there a sister that, that was in a situation and so you said, I, I just got to do what I got to do. I mean, if somebody talked back to me, I just I just got to handle and do what I got to do right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so she was working when the man of God came. When the man of God called her, watch this. She was not offended that he was not concerned about what she had. Mm. Come on. Well, don't get offended. See, the man of God, see, see, thank you, Lady See, don't get offended when God needs something from you. Yeah, right. Yes. Man. Even in unexpected times, God still turns somebody and say, God still needs something. God, God still needs need something. Yeah, yeah. See, God, yeah, I understand that it's what's going on, but God said, I still have need of it. Right. I understand what's happening, but He said, I still need something. From a God wants to know when, when unexpected things happen, when things are not going well, when things are hard, when things are tough, he wants to know, can he get something from me? My Lord. And so she didn't get offended, uh, Minister Melanie, when the man of God uh, heard clearly what she said. She, see, he asked her, he said, can I get a drink of water? Uh -huh. so she, she could turn to some of water free. <laughs> yeah, turn somebody said water free. Uh -huh. yeah, water, water free. She didn't have a problem with that. You know, you want some water and you, you look parked, you, you've been walking on the road, no problem. She was, she was on the way to get some water and, 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 and if I could just for just a little self self-disclosure, that that this this little conversation is how I'm making a uh, you know I'm saying I'm saying, uh, baby can you get me and then about three or four steps out and I said and, and while you in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wish somebody talked to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said, and, and why, why are you in there? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Fix me, fix me a little something to eat. And, and she, she said, watch what she said. She said, all I've got is a little meal. Uh huh. And and and, and a little oil. Yeah. And she said, what little I do have, under the circumstances, I'm preparing it for me and my son. So that we can have one last meal together, one one moment of dignity, one final moment of fellowship together before we die. My Lord. My God. My God. But the thing that amazed me, and this is what this is what the Spirit of God began to, to really show me. The woman, the woman did not, Sister Rice, get offended when the man of God heard clearly what she said and said, do what I told you to do anyway. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. My God. <laughs> Yeah, we, we say we want to hear from God, but, but do we really want to turn to somebody and say, do you really want to hear from God? Yeah, yeah, we say we want to hear from God. God, tell me what you need. Show me what you, what you want. But, but, but how do we conduct ourselves? How do we, how do we receive what God tells us to do? And so the man of God, because the word, because the spirit of God moved upon him and said, in spite of what she had, you ask her to fix for you first. He said, fix for me first. And watch this. If you read through the text fast, I'm getting happy. If you read through the text fast, you'll miss, again, the prophetic voice of God. Because look at what the man of God had. He said, he, he knew exactly what she had. But he said to her, fix for me as I told you. And then go fix with your young man. Your man, your man said, I told him. She said, all I got is enough to make one cake. That's all I got. But what the man of God told her is go do as I told you to do. And if you do that, that when you go back, turn to somebody and say, when you go back, Is there anybody here that knows that there's a voice crying out to you even right now? Right in the midst of your circumstance. God is trying to let you know that I've already made provision. But I want to know, can you be obedient to my voice right now? I know it don't make sense. All I've got is a little meal and a little oil. How could you ask me for my last? He said, because I already gave I wish somebody would help me today. The Bible said that the woman, that she went to do as the man of God said, and she made him a little cake, and she brought the cake to him. Is there anybody here that knows how to present your last to God? Is there anybody here that knows how to give your last to God? God don't want you to give begrudgingly. God don't want you to give out of frustration. God don't want you to give out of anger. He loves 
a cheerful giver. I believe that the woman of God came and she gave the man of God the cake that she had made and she had a smile on her face because something on the inside was telling her I could trust God. I got a question today. Is there anybody in the house that can trust God? God is asking you for your last and he wants to know can it trust you? God, how can you ask me for my last? The Bible said that when the woman went back after she had taken care of the man of God, is there anybody here that let me close in the book of Matthew in the sixth chapter, verse number 33, the writer records, he said, good God, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Is there anybody here that knows that when you subtract for God, that God then will multiply? Is there anybody here that knows that when you take a loss, a loss for the kingdom, that God will add to your suffering? Say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Say yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about Jesus. The Bible said that the woman was faithful to God. Yeah. And right in her faithfulness, God rewarded her. And he said that your oil and your meal, that it will never fail again. I want you to know that God is a promise keeper. Is there anybody here that knows that God is a promise keeper? The Bible said that her and her son, they ate and were full. I'm reminded of the story of the 5,000 that were hungry. And the Bible said that the disciples told Jesus, we don't have nothing to feed these people. Let them go get it for themselves. I want you to know that there's some folks around you who will declare that they're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. They'll talk behind your back and say, go get it for yourself. They don't care nothing about your circumstance. But I want you to know that if you keep your priorities in line with the will of God, that God will, God will make a way out of no way. The Bible said that there was land in the midst of the multitude. The Bible said that all he had were two fish and five loaves of bread. Good God Almighty. But the Bible said that Jesus blessed it and it broke it and said give to them that they may eat. Is there anybody here that can tell somebody that he fed me when I was hungry, that he nourished me when I was malnutrition, when I was wasting away, God gave me what I need. Give me somebody that will praise God with me in this place. Open up your mouth and tell God thank you for making a way out of no way. But Minister Melody, the miracle was not in the feeding, but the miracle was in the dew in the morning. Is there anybody here that knows that after the storm has passed over, that there's dew in the morning, that there's residue in the morning? Weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Is there anybody here that can remember when your morning came? It had rained all night, that the winds blew all night long. You were tossed and turned by the storm of life, but morning came. Is there anybody here that when you lifted up your head, you saw the dew in the morning? Somebody here, give God a praise for the dew in the morning. What is the dew in the morning? It's the after 
effects. It is the evidence. It is a leftover that God kept his promise that I will not be destroyed by my circumstance. Is there anybody here that can give God a praise for bringing you through the storm? Bringing you through your problem? It didn't make sense why God would allow the storm to come. It didn't under make sense how God could make you experience loss. It didn't make sense that God made you cry. But is there anybody here that can repeat with me? Weeping in good for a night. Joy comes in the morning. Somebody here shout to the mountain top. My joy came in the morning like the dew in the morning. The Bible said that after they fed the five thousand, not including the women and children, the Bible said that they took up twelve baskets of leftovers. How is it possible that you can get twelve baskets of leftovers from two fish and five loaves of bread? Is there anybody here that can say with me, he'll do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask or even think of God. There's good news that there's provision even when it don't make sense. The Bible said that Jesus, the Lamb of God, the babe that was wrapped in swaddling clothes, the promised Messiah, the King of Kings, that it came to 33 generations. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He gave sight to the blind. He fed the multitude. But the Bible said that in the garden of Gethsemane, that the unexpected happened to the one that knew everything. The Bible said that the Roman soldiers captured Jesus. And the Bible said that it didn't make sense that he was taken away because he knew no sin and he had done no crime. The Bible said that it didn't make sense that they beat him all night long. And he had never said a mumbling word. It did not make sense that he was put on trial for a crime that he did not commit. It didn't make sense that they would find him guilty and let Barabbas go free. It didn't make sense that they would put him on a hill called Golgotha and nail him to an old rugged cross. It didn't make sense to nobody to see our Lord and Savior hanging on the cross. But I got news that it made sense if you heard what Jesus said. He said, I came to give my life as a ransom that you might go free. Say it. Say it. It made sense if you were listening to Jesus just a few days ago. He said, you can tear down this body, but in three days, I'm coming back with all power in his hands. It didn't make sense that they would lay him in a borrow tomb. Is there anybody here that knows that the reason why you borrow something is because you're playing to get it back? Say yes. The Bible said he lay there Friday. He lay there Saturday. But early Sunday morning, he got up all power in his hands. It didn't make sense, but it made sense because I heard Jesus said, if I, if I, I, if I, I lifted up from the earth, I'll draw on me, unto me, say it, say it, say it, say it, I'm grateful that what may 
sense to me is senseless to the world. And what don't make sense to the world makes perfect sense to me. The Bible says to use the simple things to confound the wise. Let me close. Why a pandemic? Why sickness? I heard God say over in Second Chronicles, second fourteen. He said, "If my people which are called by my name shall humble, humble themselves and pray, see my favor and turn from their wicked ways," He said, "Then." We got you to make sense. Come on. I love it. Uh. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Ooh, Jesus. Yeah. Why, God? Uh-huh. Why? He said, because I love you. Uh-huh. He said, I would. He said, I would to my word. Mm-hmm. Let me hear about. My God today. He said, I would that my word be fulfilled mm -hmm. in you. He said, well, what are you saying, God? He said, did I not tell you uh -huh. that if you suffer with me, yes, sir. You said it, Lord. that you were reign with me. Send the book. Somebody here, somebody all over the world, and I don't know what you're coming through. My God. I don't know how God is working. Mm -hmm. The first thing I want you to know is not the devil. That the enemy has nothing to do. Stop giving God's glory away to the enemy. My Lord. And assuming that the enemy is doing something. Mm. Nothing happens to you. Unless it gets God's celestial signature. Yes, yes. And so if God is allowing it to be, God has a plan. Yes. He said if you suffer with him, yes, sir. then you will reign with him. Somebody under the sound of my voice. Please I beg you today. Listen to God crying out to you. Listen, listen to the Holy Spirit, who is the paraclete, or the one who goes beside you. The fulfillment of the promise of God, he said, I already prayed to the Father mm -hmm. yeah. to send you another comforter. Yeah. But before that, he said, I'll never leave you, oh, yes. nor forsake you. So whoever you are, wherever you are today, whatever you've been going through, it may not make sense. Mm -hmm. But that's why he told the prophet to write, my ways are not your ways. Amen. See, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Mm -hmm. As high as heavens are above the earth, yeah. so are my ways from your ways. Somebody out there today, God sent this word just for you. My Lord. Because he loves you. He cares for you. And he wants to remind you that he is your answer. He's your way out. Whether you're barren, whether you're broken, or whether you've been betrayed, 
He said, I want you to know today yeah. that I'm here for you. If you're under the sound of my voice today, yes, Lord. if this word resonates with you, if you can hear God calling out to you, and if you will just tell God yes, mm -hmm. I want you to raise your hand, close your eyes, bow your heads, raise your hand right where you are. Yes. And make this declaration with me. Say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me for straying away. Yes. Forgive me for the choices in my life. Yes. And I ask you today. Yes, Lord. Please, Lord. Take control of my life. Yes. I believe you are the Messiah. The son that came as a payment to redeem me. I also believe, God, that in the giving of your life and even now sitting at the right hand of the Father that you still are pleading my case. Yes. And for that, God, I say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, I surrender. And acknowledge that one day you'll come back. After your church will have spot a wrinkle. And I say thank you for including me in that number. Thank you, Lord. If you prayed this, God receives you now. Yes, thank you, Lord. And all of heaven is rejoicing that we rejoice with you today. Thank you so much for being with us.